Everybody has a book inside them and every person's story can help every person. There's that great quote, serve the many for service to the many leads to greatness. If overthinking is poison, writing is the antidote. Legacy, all right? If I had a book that was written by my great, great, great grandfather, I would read it. Welcome to the Create Today podcast. I'm your host, Karen Stanley, certified rapid transformational therapist and hypnotherapist. And my passion is helping women heal from the past and learn how to create the life they love one day at a time. And this show is all about how you can do just that. My guest today is the infamous Mike Fallett, the book man. He's the CEO, founder, owner, entrepreneur of Million Dollar Book Man. No, Million Dollar, million dollar Book Agency. Agency. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> book Man, Book Marketing, it all runs together. It's all of it. That's what's so cool. So Mike helps people publish books and he helped me publish mine. I this tracked one. the one. Heck yeah. That? Where's it at? I know I have it. You somewhere. got it behind you somewhere. In the, it's, <laughs> behind you. There's only 300 books, so. Wow. Is that how many you've published so far? 356 bestsellers. So there's a pile Damn. sitting around me. So it's yeah, so cool. it's around here. I know I have a truck, the one, but I have a pile in the warehouse too. So I know guys <laughs> get her book. <laughs> That's right. Free, free was just shipping. Yeah. It's the best. And, and so he's really figured out an incredible way to help people write that book and, and with anything, you, you, even with writers, with the artwork, with the publishing, with the layout, how to do all the stuff on Amazon. And he really makes it easy. And I really think this is so important for people to write books and so many reasons. So before I get to Mike, um, kids, everybody has a book inside them. I really, truly believe that. I know Mike agrees for a lot of different reasons, but not just to help your business. It's because you have a story to tell. And Every person's story can help every person. Everyone can help each other if we just share the truth and share what we've been through and some of the things that we've struggled with and how we got through them in any area of life. So there's my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with everything you just said. 100%. So Mike, let's get into it. What are the top five, doesn't matter how many reasons, I just pick five, why everybody should write a book? Mm, That's okay. number one. So, yeah. So number one, in my opinion, is it gives you clarity. When you start to articulate your life down on a piece of paper, maybe this is for the very first time you're clarifying where you come from, where you're at now, and where you want to go. Brilliant. And those stories will start to pop up, and they're going to remind you of those forks in the road, whether you turn the right way or the wrong way. <laughs> it starts to give you this picture of, of how you got where you're at now. And that to me is a superpower. Having clarity Incredible. on your life in totality, most people will never obtain that. And hmm. when you do that, you also start to notice if you're living an exciting life or not. Are you learning things that are valuable to others or not? Most likely, and this is across the board, you've learned so many things in your life that you now take for granted that if you found a Doc Brown who's working on a DeLorean, and he says, let's go back to who you were 15, 20 years ago. And let's give them, let's give that individual a recipe or an ingredient list of what to do and what not to do in order to become successful. You would say, oh my God, you know what? When it comes to dating, I would not do this ever again, but I would do this. You know, when it comes to building a business, I wouldn't do this, but I would do this. You're learning all these things that you would could definitely help your former self out. And if you can help your former self, that means you could help someone else out. And 100%. so then once you have the stories that are clear minded now, what about the lessons you've learned? You articulate those lessons. Now you're adding meaning and purpose to your life. You have these valuable takeaways that you can serve others with. There's that great quote, serve the many for service to the many leads to greatness. So now by putting your lessons down on a piece of paper and giving it out to the world, it might give you a little bit of a boost, maybe wind in your sail that says, you know what? I now have meaning and purpose. Why don't I try to help others who align with who I used to be? 
Let me go out and maybe fix their drug addiction, maybe their their tax problems or their business develop, development issues. Let me help those individuals. And now you get on podcasts, you get on speaking gigs, you you, you start to help individuals with consultations. It gives you this new life and it creates a new identity. And that's probably the third or fourth or fifth, however you want to look at it. Yeah. The identity that it creates by being a best-selling author in some subject, you now have this accolade, this 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 piece of credibility that you didn't have prior. And so the true. word for authority is author. So now you have authority on some type of uh, subject that becomes your identity. Oh my God, you know what Karen Stanley, she was the best-selling author of Attractor One. She could help people when it comes to finding that dream girl or dream guy. Wait a second. Get her on our show. I want to talk to her. And you could do all kinds of stuff before. You could be in marathons. You could be in the Olympics. You could do hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate. I am telling you, when you get up on stage, one of the first phrases that you'll hear is best-selling author of blank, the book that you wrote. That a is an identity. Absolutely. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but I wanted to really enforce the emphasize that you said, because you've learned so much, you have grown so much, and sometimes we don't realize how much. And right. writing it down, you're like, oh, I, I, it's hard to remember how you used to think about things, how you used to make decisions, because it, you've changed. Everything's changed in the last 10 years. And it's really hard to remember what it was like, how I did think and feel and process and react, fill in the blank, 10 years ago. Unless you sit down and you really slow down. That's what I love about writing is it slows me down. And I can really process and really articulate my thoughts a lot better. And therapy. Wasn't yeah. it therapy? Well, it is therapy. I mean, it's, it's scientifically proven. Yeah. You turn your journal into a book to help somebody. It's brilliant. Um, and also, you know, some people are like, well, I don't want to be on podcasts. I don't want to be a speaker. Okay, great. You don't have to be because your book can also be just, just a book just by itself. If that's what you want, it doesn't, you don't have to be a speaker or a podcast guest, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Th there's a great quote out there and I, I wish I could take for credit for it, but mm -hmm. uh, most people struggle with overthinking and indecision. And some great writer said, if overthinking is poison, writing is the antidote. And yes. when, when you start to see how, you know what, all of that doesn't matter. That's all noise. But wow, how was I thinking back then as compared to now? What shaped all that? Oh, it was this one book. Oh, my God. You know what? Because of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I was never the same. Oh my God, you have the uh, tattoo Arte. Thank God I joined this mastermind and, and I met this person. And that was, oh my God, you know what? It connects the dots. And, oh, that is the one thing that I would go back to my former self and tell that individual joining a mastermind, read this book. You start to see certain things down on a piece of paper. It's like a roadmap. And I'm telling you that when you're lost in the woods and you have no map to go, you're depressed. I will say when you have a, a light at the end of the tunnel, you have hope. And I guess maybe that's what happens when you write a book. You have not only a new identity, but maybe you have a light at the end of the tunnel. You mm -hmm. have this ability to, to fight maybe that indecision or the overthinking that is mm -hmm. happening. And maybe you're able to, for the very first time, say, well, you know what? If I put these words down on a piece of paper and it changes someone else's life, forget about my own problems. I get to help others. You get out of your own way and you become more of a servant to the world. 100%. Love it. Okay. <laughs> number two, or maybe we're on number seven now. <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah. everybody should write a book. <laughs> well, well, I guess, uh, you know, I, I, one thing that um, I do teach a lot about is how it's just the, it's the fire starter to a business. Mm. And uh, I, I look at everything as if I'm going to, if I'm going to create this asset, a book is an asset. It better be something that serves others and myself for the rest of my life. If I'm going to invest time or money, it needs to help me get down the road to the promised land. So when you have a book like you have with a free plus shipping offer, you now can just give this book away. Yes, you could sell it on Amazon, which is what we recommend in the beginning. You can get social proof by getting testimonials and reviews. But when you have this book and you give it away and you just find out if they're interested in the content that you're offering – you could say, well, since you got this book, you're interested in Tractor One. I'll give it to you for free. Just pay for shipping. 
But guess what? Since I know you're interested in this, I'm going to have a webinar. I'm going to have a course. I'm going to have a, a mastermind on it. I'm going to have t-shirts on it. I'm going to have other products and services that will definitely help you. It's your flag that you put up in the air and you say, if you have this problem, I can help you in many different ways. And yeah. so it becomes a fire starter for a business with the right CRM on the back end, with the right marketing. It becomes a, uh, it becomes a pathway to creating a tribe and then serving that tribe possibly for the rest of your life. Yeah, I, it's so true. You can help them further because a book is so powerful and what we read and can and consume and actually digest is what is it? There's like a stat somewhere. It's like, we really only retain what 10% or 15% of what we read, mm -hmm. something like that. Right. So I love how you call it a fire starter because you're like, how many times have I gone back and read the same book twice or three times? Because it's been a while. Um, the man's search for meaning, my sister and I just brought that up, Victor Frankel. I'm like, I think it's been 30 years since I've read that book and I'm going to read it again. Like I just downloaded it again because sometimes we need to read it again. So I just love the fire starter because a book is a brilliant way to start. And it can help you with so much and rethink the way that you think and help you achieve whatever you're trying to achieve. And then you can help further, maybe with therapy as a therapist, obviously, or a journal, obviously I have the companion journal, but what, what other things um, have you used in the business? And I want to kind of explain to listeners who have been thinking about writing a book who haven't started yet and don't really even know where to start. I would love for you to just walk them through how easy the process is. If they just call you and set up an appointment and then tell them how easy it is, just kind of walk them through the process real quick. Yeah, the old days of having gatekeepers, of publishers needing to approve of your story and your lessons for them to actually put it out into the world, those days are gone, thank God. Now, I'm not a huge Jeff Bezos fan, but he completely <laughs> changed self-publishing. Bro. And, uh, Bro. Yeah, and you have to thank somebody like that because he made it easy for individuals to bring their stories to life in a book in a very cost-effective manner. So where does it all begin? Yeah, you can obviously give us a call and you can go to our, our website, dreamstarterspublishing.com. You can schedule a consultation. We can run you through all this. But to break it down, it's if I were you and you're sitting there, man, what would I write a book about? Hmm. I would love for you to just dream a little bit. Envision yourself five years from now or a year from now. What do you want to be doing? How do you want to make most of your money? And then put that on a piece of paper. Man, I would love to be doing X, Y, and Z. I would love to be helping women start businesses. I'd love to be helping couples, you know, have a better marriage, whatever. <laughs> Great. Well, then can you articulate 15 lessons that you would teach those people that will help them get to where you're at now? It could be as simple in the most generic form possible. And there is an equation that I live by, and it's generic lessons, okay? Mm -hmm. I two specific stories geared towards a specific audience. So let's break that down. Okay. Dream vision of yourself. Okay. Here's where I want to go. Here are my lessons. How did I learn these lessons? Now that you got the specific story, uh, this person broke up with me. I started this business and I failed. Uh, my mom taught me this whenever I was seven years old. I never forgot it. Whatever it is. These stories are specific. Get them down on a piece of paper in one to one word to a sentence. Just have a sentence there. And then who do I want to help? That should be pretty intuitive, right? You know who you want to help and articulate those words. Single mom, married couple, rich guy, divorced man, 17-year-old kid, whatever it is, bring that um, avatar to life with a few words. Now you have lesson story target audience. You would give that outline to someone like me and we would interview you. And we would just have a conversation. Hey, lesson number one is get around the right people. What does this mean to you and how did you learn this lesson? And we have a conversation. So we record it via Zoom and then that conversation goes to a writer. The writer writes it up. A couple different ways of going about that. But let's just say we have one human that watches it and we bring this story to life in a book. The books that we write are typically 120 pages, 25,000 words minimum. And so we write the first draft. We give it to you through a few back and forths. Mm -hmm. We help you out with title and subtitle. That always comes after the interview, never comes first, <laughs> always after, simply because you want to marry the title to the content. You don't want to marry the content to the title. And let me explain what that means. When you are 
putting together a book and you start off with a title and you say, all right, everything I write has to do something with this title. It limits you creatively. Mm. But if you say, you know what, how do I want to help the world? And what's the business I want to build? Let me write this lesson sheet out. And then, you know what, now that I have all this content, what would I call this? And then we help you out with title and subtitle, my recommendations. We give you, th you know, many, you know, mm -hmm. 10 to 12 different suggestions, but three words, the subtitle should be a how-to or the ultimate guide for. Once you have the book itself and the title and subtitle, we go to a cover designer. We give you at least 20 cover designs. You pick your favorite cover. That's done. Read your book, make adjustments, a few back and forth. That's done. Upload it to Amazon. Amazon prints the book. You review it one last time, you give us a thumbs up, and then we put you on the schedule to turn you into an Amazon bestseller. You know that game really well. It's all about leverage, positioning, and timing. So totally. at the end of all this, it's usually 60 to 90 days, and you're a best-selling author for life. It's so great, and you make it really easy. But I also wanted to just jump in there and say you don't have to use your writers. You can just write a book. You know, oh, yeah, you can right. use your team. I just wrote a book and I had a bunch of people helping me and I had a lot of editors and then your team helped me as well. So it's like, you can just use the editors. It, what's that saying? There's like, there are no good writers, only good editors. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, it could be the, the case because an editor is the, the, is the last person that's going to see it and they can fix a lot. So, I Hey, say it you want to write, I mean, just so you I, know, you want there's to AI out there guys. True. AI is getting better and better. Within five years, AI will probably be the best writer that's ever existed. Gosh, so sadly. there are programs out there that you can do things in a way. True. Just Our philosophy is get it done. Get your story, your lessons down in any way, shape and form. And if you're a great writer, Karen, you you, you wrote and then you had an editor yeah. fix it up. That's That could be your, your, your play, guys. It doesn't need to be one set way. It depends on your personality. And you have all the tools. So whatever it is, wherever it is that you you feel like, oh, I'm not sure how to do this part, but I really want to do this part myself. Great. Do it. It's it. the best. Yeah. And, and putting it all together, that's kind of tricky for the average person, it is. right? You it have is. words on a piece of paper, right? It's probably an eight and a half yes. by 11 on your Google Docs or Microsoft Word. Or if you're one of the other people, pages, I don't like Apple people, Ugh. just so you know. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so. Apple people, but, but pages, no, no, no bueno. Oh, pages, they're, they're terrible. Editors <laughs> hate pages. Anyways, <laughs> but anyway, it's there, right? You have the words. Great. Right. What do I do with it now? Well, now you need to put in a six by nine format. You also need to have the margins, right? You can't have any um, em embedded fonts. I mean, all this stuff is like really tricky for somebody who's going to do it one time. So it my is. recommendation is give it to someone who does it day in and day out, like our company. I'm yes. sure there are many out there that could help you out, but just get it done and then have the cover design put on top of it with the right sizes, right? Like I, I, you, do, do, you don't want to deal do, with any do of the that cover stuff. design for you, right? Yep. We do. Yep. So the cover design, think about it. Like the average person doesn't realize that Oh, what does the cover file look like? How much? What? What are the? What are the margins inside? And in my mind, I already know that we're talking about twelve point five two zero by nine point two five zero. That's embedded in my brain. That right. we need to start there. The the, person, you're the only person with that embedded in your brain. I know. Well, well that <laughs> and my assistant slash project manager, she knows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to text it thousands of times in the beginning. Thousands and thousands. Uh, uh, but it's this type of stuff that is so rare like if you're gonna do it one time just get somebody to do it for you you focus on what you are great at whether it's you know marketing or you know one-on-one -on -one consultations or speaking about the the book or heck even if you don't want to do anything in regards to marketing at least you get it done in a timely manner so yes that's what i recommend it there's just so much stuff you don't know and it's so much easier to just let somebody else do all those details uh, I mean, you could figure it all out, I guess, but yeah. just take a whole lot of time and, and your firm is, is really affordable. Um, okay. So people that are on the fence still, um, let's help them decide to write it. What okay. other, why they should write it? Oh, okay. I, I think maybe this is the, the third piece, maybe the most important, especially for, you know, I would say men that I've talked to in the past, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, maybe for everybody, but mm -hmm. legacy. All right. Mm -hmm. If I had a book, that was written by my great, great, great grandfather. I would read it. I would love to know what he was thinking. I right. I have. My, and I don't know about your, your family or whatever, but uh, I, I don't know much about my great, great, great grandfather and grandmother. Mm -hmm. I would love to find out. I know that my great grandfather had 
a, a run in with uh, three guys jumped him and uh in 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 order for him to live he actually he 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 punched somebody in the in the face the guy died they put him in court he got out because it was self defense there's people who found, who uh heard about it and oh. so that was my great grandfather he was jumped in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania walking out of a bar wow and i would love to find out what he was thinking no. what he was going through so when it comes to legacy think about what you're Putting down in a in a book, if Amazon's around a hundred years from now, your book will be around. Regardless, get your book printed, right? And have it given out to your family. And that book will live on for generations. Hmm. So your story, your lessons, it's not gonna go to waste. It'll be there for your kids or your grandkids or your grand grand grandkids, I guess is the best way to great, put it. Great, great, grand. Yeah, <laughs> great, 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 yeah. great grandkids, right? Or <laughs> Uh, or even maybe nieces and nephews, whatever it is, legacy people want to um, maybe mm. think about what you went through or learn what you went through. So very significant when it comes to legacy. And uh, I think that uh, more so than any time that I've seen, people are focusing on, all right, if I'm going to build this business and I'm going to do all these wonderful things, it's got to be documented. So people know what I was going through and what I experienced. So the legacy for sure would be at the top of the list. Well, I think it's even a stronger um, argument if Amazon does go down, then print the book. You have a printed copy they can't take from you. Yes. And it, it, I, that's why I buy paper books of every single book. I listen to Audibles all the time. And I always buy the paper version. I want the actual book in case the internet goes down, in case the power goes out. Which is more it. likely to happen in the next five years than we ever thought possible. But yeah. <laughs> the next, how many more days do we have? <laughs> yeah, that's right to the election, right? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's it's all possible. And, um, you know, so I have thousands of board games and card games and just to get in the real world, get off screens and get spend quality time with either yourself or your spouse, or your family or whatever, get the printed book and then you have it forever. And I love that. I, I actually didn't even think about, you know, generations to come, you know, just having a book that mom or grandma, I don't even have grandkids yet, but I didn't even, I never thought of that having something that you wrote for your great, great grandkids. I, that, that's a great idea. <laughs> Good idea, Mike. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you well, should do it for business. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess, when, you know, people are always talking about legacy wealth, right? They're talking mm -hmm. about building a business that lives on forever. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the, I, I think that's huge. I, I'm not against it in any way, uh -huh. but w if you can give the recipe of success, mm -hmm. the mindset of work ethic, they, somebody in your family, you talk about attracting the one, mm -hmm. right? If you're able to document the story of how you met your 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 husband mm -hmm. or your wife, mm -hmm. and you give lessons on love or relationships, man, uh, two hundred years from now, if somebody's like Karen, let me look her up. What did she do? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, did you know that she became a best-selling author and she did this, this, and this mm -hmm. in this year? And this is how we're here to this day. Oh my God, like That's to cool. me, it's so powerful. But a a story that nobody knows about is a waste. You need to document it in a way that, you know, it, it adds meaning to somebody else if they're curious about your life, but also something that you have gone through, maybe whether it's difficult or very tragic, mm -hmm. does lend favor to someone else's life. 100%. The story not told is tragic. I love that. So we got to share the stories. And I think um, from my perspective, just from my upbringing, we were really taught to be proper and be polite and be kind and follow the 10 commandments. All those are really good strategies. And sometimes it keeps us from sharing the vulnerable stuff and sharing mm -hmm. the difficulties. And I know a lot of people have this fear. Well, if I share this, ugh, I'm not really that proud of this part of my life, or I'm really not proud of that I did this X, Y, and Z. But if we are, ne if we never share any of that, then everybody else going through the exact same fucking thing thinks they're the only one. They think they're alone. And maybe you could speak to that too, because you've been really vulnerable on social media. You shared short shared a lot of your journey, a lot of the downs, and then the ups. Because you, my gosh, what? 10 years ago, you went through bankruptcy. Is that right? No, I, I 
I was close to bankruptcy, really? but I did. And I was $300,000 in debt. And I almost, I mean, there was a couple of days there. I'm like, what? Well, how easy is it to just file for bankruptcy? I did file for bankruptcy back in file? 08. So I did go bankrupt and wow. I lost my house and my car all in one year <laughs> and well, got a divorce. I, I'm telling you, I've interviewed many people with that story <laughs> exactly. right around the 2008, 2009 yep. time period too. Yep. The, the storm that hit people back then is just insane. But it, it's what you just said is so, so important. Being vulnerable is the key, right? There's two things that happen when you're vulnerable. You really show the picture so they can really know, like, and trust you of what you went through. Mm -hmm. And, and if you're vulnerable, um, they're, they're able to latch onto it and say, wow, you know what? That's exactly what I'm going through. Oh my God. This is, this is what I agree with. Oh my God. I went through the same type of divorce. Oh my God. I like this person more. The other part of it is the more vulnerable you are, the more courage it takes to say it which no matter who you are, you respect somebody who has courage. So yeah. if you're vulnerable with your story, you showcase what you went through and you don't hold anything back. It doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on. You have to say to that person, eh, you know what? I respect that you have this much courage to say that because not many people can. And it's so true. if it is your tribe, if it is those people who are fall in line with the message completely, they're going to love the message because it resonates with them, but they're also going to love you even more because you are having the courage to say what most people don't, including themselves. So you become a leader in their eyes. So being vulnerable is key. It's what separates you. You're, I said that equation before, lesson, mm -hmm. story, target audience, general lesson, specific story. Why? Because technically I've interviewed hundreds of entrepreneurs. We're all coming to the same conclusions. But mm -hmm. what makes us different from one person to the next is the story behind it. So if you hold back on the story and keep those details inside, you're kind of keeping the gold from the world, right? That's what makes you unique. So I would put out there the, the vulnerable pieces. It, it's crazy how the more you do it, the more it's like a muscle. It becomes stronger and easier to communicate it on social media or on stage or on a podcast, right. and you become better at it. So holding it back, it's sort of like a skeleton in the closet. And then you kind of are always looking over your shoulder. Who found that, that, skull, that skeleton? Oh, man. But if you say, hey, very, very much like even though I'm not an Eminem fan at all, <laughs> he goes up there at the end of 8 Mile and he gives that person all the ammunition. Here's all the bad shit you could say about me. What are you going to say about me now? Hmm. And when you give somebody you know, the keys to say, listen, here's everything that's, that, that I went through, you kind of take away the power of any hater to come at you somewhere, some way in the future with that information. So I believe in, hey, telling it like it is, telling people what you went through because it becomes it's a very freeing experience. So you resonate with people, you establish courage, which gets respect from others. And uh, it's a freeing experience that, you know, there's no price tag for that. It really is. And I just want to say, you know, uh, an AMN, because it does take a lot of courage from my personal experience. I was always like, well, how much, how much should I put in here? Like, I, I want to help people, but I don't want to just, you know, lay out all my dirty laundry. <laughs> I mean, at that point, I was already 40 years old. Like, I've done a lot of stupid stuff. <laughs> and here's, I can write a whole book on what not to do. It'll just be all stories about don't do this, don't do this. Don't do this. That was my first book. Don't do this when starting a business. Yeah. Don't hire the best attorney in the world that you can find when you have no money. Right. <laughs> Oh gosh. Yeah. We we could, but then it's not, I don't want an entire, I could, that one would be a thousand pages. Right. I mean, you know, so it's like, it does take courage mm -hmm. and it's, it is scary and you feel, Ooh, my parents are going to read this, you know, and, um, do it anyway, because it does, I can just, I want to echo in, a, in agreement. You, your sentiment is true. I, it does get easier and it does help people more if you can be vulnerable about your mistakes and what you've learned from them. And it's not the end of the world. People read it. Who cares if they don't like it? It's okay. It's totally yeah. fine. It's okay. And, and like you said, people will love you. No, not necessarily, but it's okay. They, they might go, Oh, well, wow. Well, okay. Well, you Whatever. probably realize this. Hey, you know what? There's a point where you maybe want to hold something back. Maybe about yeah. a conversation you had with your husband or somebody, yeah. but you tell enough to give somebody the full picture, right? Yeah. That's it. And maybe over time you can become a little bit more comfortable with the sharing the entire story. Yeah. And so get to a point where you're like, Hey, this is just a little bit outside my comfort zone, but they need to know this piece. 
doesn't have to be every detail. Get to a point where it's still vulnerable. People see the true story. And then you work from there. You don't have to end there. So true. There's, can, you, you don't have to end there. That's it. That's a mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> ending there we'll wrap it up no um no i do want to wrap it up i know we've got tons of things on the docket today but i just want to urge anyone who's listening to just get started so the best way to get started i'll just share what i did and then you can tell what you recommend for other people you can share your experience about just writing your first book i just carved out saturdays because my husband always worked six days a week. He always worked on Saturdays. We all have busy lives. We all have all kinds of things going on. I had kids, everybody. So I just went, okay, so Saturday when he goes to work, I'm just going to sit at the kitchen table. And as soon as my kids need me or something else pops up, I, you generally didn't have any appointments on Saturdays. So I just go, sometimes it was three hours. Sometimes it was four. Sometimes it was one. Sometimes I get all six hours, you know, and I just, that's it. All I did was write on Saturdays. And then... Um, it took me a long time, but it didn't matter. I mean, there's no huge rush, really. But if I had known Mike back then when I first started, then I might have had I might have hired you to do more of the writing because it's easier sometimes to talk. But if you're like me, maybe you want to write. Writing is very therapeutic, mm -hmm. therapeutic. So just write, just start anywhere. Just start. So I would just do it forever and ever and ever. And I probably, I don't know, a year and a half or so of Saturdays. That's it. So, I mean, I just throw that out there because you don't have to have a cabin like, you know, Steve, what's his name? Who <laughs> 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 wrote all the horror movie, horror books? Stephen what's King. It? Yeah, Stephen King. Uh, as a side note, I've never read any of Stephen King books except for his memoir about writing. And it's called On Writing. Uh, I read it. I read it. Yeah. So good, right? Yeah, I read I it. Yep. It. So that was a, uh, a a gift somebody gave me, mm. and I was, you know, I'm not a big Stephen King fan. If you not look either. into his politics, I'm At not all. a big fan. But that book Get was him. fascinating. <laughs> how he put it together, and certain things that he said in it really maybe analyze how I looked at editing. You know, he had four, he had four editors for every book. You know, so yeah. like even even when it comes to somebody who's great as him writing, you need help. It's crazy. Everybody has a massive team. Um, and I, he, the reason why it was so powerful is because he told the story about his own life of how he was when he was a kid, how he started that little newsletter when he was like, what, 14 or 13 or something. That was fascinating to me. Everything about like his life, how do you really, you know, create a, a, a writer was so cool. So I recommend that to everybody. But that was just my, experience. I just, you know, because I didn't know Mike. So I just started writing on Saturdays for a couple hours every week or whatever. What was away. Yeah. Yeah. You... It, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to counteract that with something that I, okay. So you could do that, <laughs> you can, but it'll take a lot longer. <laughs> Here's what I recommend guys. Put a date on the calendar. There's a, there's a story in, in my book where, um, I was 30 years old and I hated my life. I was at the bar and I'm just sitting there drinking and mm. can't believe I'm 30 years old and I hate where I'm at in life. And I remember saying to myself, no more. When I turn 31, I'm not going to be at this job. Mm. And I put on the calendar by at the end of December of that year, and it was 10 years ago, so mm. of, tw of, tw of 20 tw or 2014, mm. I, I, be I need to be out of that job. And I'm telling you, I stuck to it because it was on the calendar. It was a reminder. Get the hell out of here. Hmm. I applied that same technique to my books. If I'm writing a book, I have to put a date on the calendar that it needs to be out the door by. And let's just say I missed that date by a few days. It's still hmm. a pedal to the metal of I need to get it done by this date. I just turned 40 this year. And hmm. uh, I said, all right, my next book is coming out um, on August 10th. Okay, August 10th, it's coming out, and that's the one, never say die. Well, okay. as I was writing it and getting more and more involved, I said, all right, I'm sticking to it, but the pre-sale is going to be begin on August 10th, and the book is not coming out till October 1st. So I put it eight, a couple months prior to August 10th, got me going, put a date on the calendar, moved it to October 1st, and that's when my book hits the shelves. Having a date on the calendar forced me to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on these days to get it done by, and I needed to get by 25% here, 50% here, 75%. So it allowed me to reverse engineer it and say, all right, these are the metrics I need to hit by these days. That's how I 
treat business. That's how I treat book writing. So if I were you and you're looking to get this book done, whether it's a year out, six months out, or right. three months out, put something on the calendar. And Karen, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but it's amazing how you push certain things off until you have like an event coming up, a speaking gig or a podcast that you schedule. We, we scheduled this like, I guess, two months ago, three months right. ago. By having something on the calendar that you're like, I would love to have this book by to talk about it. It does do something that it's not just you um, that's, you know, that you're trying to appease. It's maybe someone else. You're having Excellent. the universe hold you accountable. If I'm going to be on that stage, I better have a book. So it's going to force me to battle through, get those words down on a piece of paper, get it formatted and uh, get it up for the world to read. So I say pick a date, stick to it, reverse engineer it. <laughs> And uh, or you can just make to do it in two years time. Don't do it the way Karen did it. <laughs> or you can do yeah, it that no way, mind. guys. Yeah. I'm not judging. Yeah, I, it's I up don't. to you. Yeah, you just make it so much easier. So tell us about the new book and tell my listeners how they can find you. Okay, so the new book is called Never Say Die, The Mindset for Life. It comes out October 1st. You can get it on Amazon right now for pre-order. Uh, but October 1st is whenever the world will see it. And I'll be at an event marketing universe in Universal Studios. So September twenty hmm. second, I did this too. That was another thing. I had this big event coming up. So the, the the people who will receive it for the very first time will be at that event in Sweet. Florida, September twenty second. But it's really all about uh, how do you stay on course? How do you keep the dream alive? If there's any one thing that I believe I'm really good at is never giving up. And if there's one thing that I want on my tombstone or that epitaph someday is never say die, because it's really all I stand for, right? I wasn't mm -hmm. born with resources. I don't have any extra skill set. Um, you know, yes, we are great at book creation, but you know, it's my team behind me. It's, I can't take all the credit for it. So it's like, what am I really good at? I don't think, I don't, I don't think I could break anything down except for, I just never give up. And Resilience. you know what, I, the, the whole book came to me and this is in the intro of the book, but uh, my mom passed away last year in May of last year. And so I was, uh, thank you. And so I'm putting together the eulogy. Have you ever written a eulogy? No, I have not. So I'm putting it together and I'm like, man, this is like the last words, you know, and I put a lot mm. of heart and soul into it. And then I realized this isn't the last word. What's the last word is what, what's on the tombstone. Oh my God, I got to come up with something for what's on my mom's tombstone. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the, the the epitaph for the tombstone and it was, uh, a mom holds her children's hands for a little while, but their hearts forever. Mm -hmm. So that's an old Irish saying. And so I put that on there. I'm like, that's how my, how the world's going to remember her, right? The eulogy mm -hmm. people, well, there was like 50 people in the room. They may remember it. And I thought it was really good. Everybody was crying and laughing and all that at the same time. But mm -hmm. when people drive by and they see that she was an awesome mom, that's all that matters. What are the words that will be on my tombstone someday? What do I want people to say about me long after I'm gone? How will I be remembered? And in the end, in my opinion, I just want people to say, you know what, Mike Fallot, he just never gave up. No matter what, he, he just kept going. To me, that's what I want. So I created this book not only as an identity creator, Never Say Die, Mike Fallot, the best-selling author, Never Say Die, but it is really what I think I'm good at. And the only way I'm able to break it down is put together my recipe for my former self, like I recommended to you, yeah. on how to keep that dream alive and to never say die. So October 1st, guys, pick it up and you can get in touch with me. Go to dreamstarterspublishing.com. You can schedule a consult with me uh, or you can just um, go to my social media. I'm all over the place. Mike Fallett, a couple different platforms, easy to find. You just changed it on Instagram. I just saw that. Never say die. Yes. Yeah. Well, so, so that's right. Love it. <laughs> so there's two two Instagrams. Mine's the dream starter and never say die. I'm glad you saw that. That's awesome. I just saw it this morning. That's awesome. Mike, thank you so much for being here and sharing all of your wisdom and helping so many people and so many authors write their books. I just love it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Honored to be here. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for being here and listening to my show. If you got any value at all, it would mean the world if you shared it and left a review. Remember, the only way to create the life you love is to take it one day at a time. Create today. God bless you.